Hi everyone, it's Mrs. McCoy. I hope you all are healthy and happy and doing well. I miss you so much and I wish we could be together in the library this week, but I am so thankful for things like YouTube and Google Classroom so that we can stay connected and I can still keep teaching your library lessons and we can share some stories together. Um, for those of you that I saw on Friday at the teacher caravan, I want you guys to know that just completely filled my heart. I loved seeing your happy faces, your awesome signs that you made, everybody waving. It just totally made my day and my week and my month. So thank you so much. If I didn't see you on Friday, please know that I am thinking about you and I miss you and I hope things are going great for you. So our story today is our last picture book biography for Women's History Month. It is about Grace Hopper and Grace Hopper was a computer programmer. She was known as the queen of computer code, and this biography is written by Lori Walmark and illustrated by Katie Wu. So let's learn a little bit about Grace Hopper. It's our title page. Grace leaned back in her chair and yawned. Once again, she had worked far into the night writing computer code. How many of you are still sticking to your regular bedtimes? Hmm, are some of you working far into the night? Maybe playing far into the night? Maybe. Grace's latest computer program, one to guide Navy missiles, was almost complete. All that was left was to check her work. Grace reviewed the code line by line, making sure she hadn't made any mistakes. When she finished, Grace set down her pencil and frowned. The last section of her program, a bit of code that multiplied numbers, looked familiar. She checked back through her work and found that she had written that same code before, over and over and over again. Grace snorted. What a colossal waste of time. There had to be a better way. Why not make the computer do the work? Computers were good at doing boring jobs. This is a quote from Grace herself. She said, I was lazy as all get out. I never wanted to do anything over again. She figured out a way to store pieces of a program, like her multiplication code, inside the machine. When she needed to use that same code in another program, all Grace had to do was tell the computer where to find it. The computer then joined together the many bits of code into one complete program. No one had ever done that before. Grace was the first. Even as a child, Grace had loved to tinker with gadgets and learn new ideas. She wanted to understand how things worked so she could make them better. When Grace was seven years old, she unscrewed the back of her alarm clock and took a peek. She reached in and, spring! Out popped a spring, followed by several gears. One rolled across the floor and under her bed. Grace scooped up the parts and tried to put them back together. No matter which piece she put where, she couldn't get the clock to run. She needed another clock she could study, one that worked. Grace sprinted from room to room. Clock by clock, she fiddled with gears and springs, levers and pins. She arranged them this way and that way. Seven clocks later, seven-year-old Grace understood what made clocks tick. When Grace's mother discovered the many jumbles of clock parts scattered around the house, all she could do was laugh. After all, Grace was just being Grace. This totally reminds me of Mrs. Reinhardt and tinkering in the STEM lab, taking things apart to figure out how they work, put them back together. This is, this is definitely a Mrs. Reinhardt story. Once Grace figured out how clocks worked, she moved on to bigger challenges. She followed a complicated blueprint and constructed a dollhouse made out of stone but there were no stairs. How would her dolls get up to the top floor? Not a problem for junior engineer Grace. She opened her construction kit and laid out everything she would need. Nuts, bolts, metal pieces, and 
and an electric motor. It took some experimentation, but Grace figured it out. Now, her dolls had a working elevator to go upstairs. Grace delighted in learning difficult concepts. The harder, the better. While her schoolmates wore frilly dresses and learned to be proper young ladies, Grace studied math and science. Her bedroom overflowed with books and scientific equipment. She raced through her high school classes and finished two years early. Grace couldn't wait to start college. Hmm, that makes me think of another biography we read before school got out. Do you remember the, uh, the book we read about the space race and Catherine and finishing college early, uh, finishing school so early? Yeah. More classes, more learning, more fun. On the day her college entrance grades arrived, Grace's hands trembled. She ripped open the envelope and proudly read aloud to her parents the many high grades in math and science. When she reached the grade for Latin, Grace fell silent. Failed. She had failed Latin. That's like an ancient language you used to have to learn in high school. Without Latin, Grace couldn't go to college. Without college, Grace couldn't be a mathematician. Without math, Grace couldn't be Grace. Grace waved to her schoolmates as they left for college without her. Nothing would stop her from joining them next year. She held her head high and returned to her studies. Working hard, Grace even conquered Latin. At the end of the year, she passed all her exams. I love hearing that part about Grace's life, that she failed a whole subject and couldn't go to college and she had to take the whole year over again, because that is a huge, massive disappointment. I mean, put yourself in her shoes. Think about how you would feel if all of your friends went on to college without you and you had to repeat that last year of high school again. That would probably be pretty disappointing. But she decided to channel that disappointment into energy and purpose and grit, and she stuck with it and did what she had to do. With her trunks packed and her math books in hand, Grace left for Vassar College, an all-women's school. Some of her classmates actually took classes called Husbands and Wives and Motherhood, but not Grace. Her favorite subjects were math and physics. Grace did more in college than just study. Whenever there was fun or adventure to be found, she was always first in line. Her personal motto was dare and do. When a barnstormer came to town offering plane rides, Grace rushed to sign up. This is a quote from her. I squandered all my money. It cost $10 and went up in the plane. She pulled herself up into the seat behind the pilot and adjusted her goggles. With a deafening roar, the propeller sputtered into action. The biplane rattled across the field and lifted off. With each loop the loop through the air, Grace's grin grew wider and wider. Because of Grace's hard work and intelligence, the other students respected her abilities. They often came to her for help with their studies. One day, her fellow students entered the room only to see a bathtub filled to the brim with water. Grace invited a volunteer to step into the tub, clothes and all. Water sloshed over the edges and flooded the floor. The students burst into laughter. Grace explained the reason for this bathtub tidal wave. The volume of the student's body pushed out the same volume of water. The result? One soggy student wrapped in a towel and one math lesson never forgotten. When Grace moved on to graduate school at Yale University, there was only one other woman in her class. But this didn't bother Grace in the least. Grace wanted to share her passion for math, so she took a job teaching back at Vassar College. Her classes were always both practical and fun. Even though Grace loved teaching, America was now at war and needed the best mathematicians to design weapons. 
patriotic grace wanted to help her country, so she tried to enlist in the Navy. That proved to be a problem. Here's a quote from her. Our young people are the future. We must provide for them. So what do you think the problem is going to be with her joining the Navy? Based on the Navy's requirements for new recruits at the time, Grace was too old and too skinny to enlist. She was 36 and weighed only 105 pounds. Grace could be very persuasive, however. It took her more than a year, but Grace convinced the Navy that they needed her. Faithfulness in all things, my motto is, you see. The world will be a better place when all agree with me. What do you think of that motto? Would the world be a better place if everyone agreed with you? Hmm, Grace thought so. Because of her superior math skills, Grace was assigned to write programs for one of the first computers ever built, the Mark I. Only a few people had ever programmed before, so she had to learn how to do it on her own. One late summer day, a coworker burst into Grace's office. The new computer, the Mark II, had stopped working. She gasped. This had never happened before, not with any of her programs. Grace thought it had to be a prank. After all, she loved playing jokes on her coworkers. Maybe the other engineers were finally getting their revenge on her. But they weren't. The computer really wasn't working. For hours, Grace and her team reviewed the code, but could find no error. It was as if the green ceramic gremlin that always decorated Grace's office had come to life and sneaked into the machine to make mischief. That was it. Maybe the problem wasn't in her program. Maybe it was in the computer itself. Grace jumped to her feet and hurried down the hall. The immense computer room usually thrummed with the click of metal switches and the whir of paper tape. But today, all was silent. Here's another quote. I have insatiable curiosity. It's solving problems. Every time you solve a problem, another one shows up behind it. That's the challenge. Grace and her team searched everywhere for the problem. Grace used her pocket mirror to check inside the machine. She angled it this way and that way, but no matter where the engineers looked, they didn't see anything wrong. No loose wires, no stray sparks, not even a naughty gremlin. The engineers were totally stumped. They had checked everything. What could be causing the problem? Then someone saw it. A moth was trapped inside, blocking a switch from working properly. One of the engineers used tweezers and removed the dead moth. The computer started up again with no problem. Being good scientists, Grace and her team taped the moth into the logbook to record their unusual finding. Grace added a note. First case of a computer, first actual case of a computer bug being found. Ever since then, because of Grace's sense of humor, computer glitches have been called bugs. Did you know that? I didn't know that before. I've always heard of things like, oh, it's bugged. There's a bug when you're talking about a glitch in the computer. But it came from an actual bug, and it came from Grace having a good sense of humor. Early computers didn't understand letters or words, only programs filled with lines and lines of ones and zeros. As Grace worked on a brand new computer called the Univac One, she thought about ways to make programming even easier. Not everyone was as comfortable thinking in numbers as she was. Grace wanted anyone to be able to use computers, not just scientists and engineers. Grace glanced at the wall clock she had rigged to run backward. It reminded her to use her imagination. Unconventional thinking was often the key to solving problems. Here's a quote. Humans are allergic to change. They like to say, we've always done it this way. I try to fight that. 
To allow her brain a chance to consider new ideas, Grace took breaks from programming. She doodled cartoons of gremlins and dragons and other fantastical creatures. It's good to take a brain break. It's good to take a brain break at home, too, if you feel overwhelmed. Say you're just taking a, a page out of Grace Hopper's book and taking a brain break. While she drew, she asked herself questions. Why should people have to learn computer language? Why couldn't computers learn people language? They could. Grace invented a program that let people use words to tell the computer what to do. Her program, named Flowmatic, included simple English commands like multiply. Flowmatic translated multiply and other commands into instructions that the computer could understand. She said, let people write their programs in English. It was common sense. This was much easier than programming pages of ones and zeros. With the help of Grace's program, she and her coworkers were able to write code more quickly and with fewer errors. When Grace was 60 years old, the Navy forced her to retire. They said she was too old to serve. She said, it was the saddest day of my life. But within a few short months, they realized their mistake and asked her to return for a short six-month assignment. This short assignment lasted for 20 years. Grace, now an admiral, finally retired from the Navy. For the second time, at age 80. For almost 50 years, Grace Hopper, the queen of computer code, dedicated her life to solving computer problems. No wonder people called her Amazing Grace. That is the end of Grace Hopper, Queen of Computer Code. I especially love all of those quotes of hers throughout the book. And there's another one on the back cover. It says, if you've got a good idea and you know it's going to work, go ahead and do it. I like that attitude. She had a lot of grit and purpose and she knew what she wanted to do. So she went and did it pretty awesome. I also really appreciate how she wanted to ha have more people have access to computers and to coding. So with that said, check the description of this video because I'm going to link a few different options for you to practice coding at home. I know you've done some of it in STEM lab with Mrs. Reinhardt before. There's lots of options where you can do it at home too. So check them out, be like Grace, do some coding, learn more about computers, and go after what you're passionate about. Don't let disappointments hold you back. I miss you guys, and I hope to see you all really soon. Take care, keep reading, keep learning. See you next time.